Hi, so today we're going to be uh, looking at piecewise functions, otherwise known as piecewise defined functions. Um, with this, that I keep saying functions as well as the word piecewise, they have to be functions. That means that when you do graph them, um, they will pass the vertical line test, okay? Now I know that's not really a graph or a sketch, but just to like show you it passes each time, no matter where I draw the vertical line. And this is two different pieces. It was a curve and a line segment. So you have to know what you're graphing um, when you look at each piece. And you have to know that altogether it becomes a function. Now, let me erase this. Sometimes, uh, it's not continuous, like it's not a curve that goes into a line or one curve that goes into another. Sometimes you will see that it may be a curve to a point and that point is an open circle. That means there's a hole there. And then another point where it's closed, I did my best to close that. And it continues from that point. It can even be another curve. Um, this is still a function because it's passing, let me do red, the vertical line test, even over here, it's only passing through one point, okay? So, let's pretend that's not there. It, it still passes, and that's why it's important to know that when you are writing a piecewise function or when you are working with piecewise defined functions, they're still functions, Okay, so you shouldn't have um, an open circle and another open circle, okay? Typically, that's not the case. Um, also, too, it could be continuous as we saw in the other uh, part. So we have these two examples here. We're gonna graph by hand and with our graphing calculator. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, do that. Okay. So for number one, it says f of x equals, and there's only one brace because it's not a solution set. There's nothing on this side. There shouldn't be. If you're ever writing a piece of x function, please do not put anything there. The first brace is not indicating that you have a solution set. It's showing you how it breaks off. The bigger the brace, the more uh, pieces that you have to um, kind of combine together for your function. So with that being said, let's take a look at number one. There are two pieces, okay? F of x is the same as y. So your y values are coming from x minus one if your x values are less than one, okay? Your y values are coming from x plus two if your x values are greater than or equal to one. So graphically, what does this mean? So I'm gonna set up two tables. Hopefully I left enough space there. We will see if I left enough space. Maybe I'll squeeze it. So the first table, I'm gonna pick x values that are less than one. I like that there. So if I pick values that are less than one, let's say like negative one or zero, but I'm also going to include one because I'm going up by integers, okay? An integer of one, that's my increment. But I could go up by 0.5, and if that's the case, then I'm, I can also go up by 0.1, and I need to be graphing this piece, okay, this line segment that has a positive slope for values of x that are less than one. That would include 0.9, and I need to know where that point is being plotted, or even 0.99 or point nine 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 or point nine 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 and hopefully you get the idea. It's pretty much going towards one. And so I just have to make note over here to myself, and you don't have to write this, that when I do plot this point, I'm not gonna plot it with my typical closed circle. I'm gonna have an open circle. 
Okay. So now I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put in here x minus 1. So negative 1 minus 1, okay, and 0 minus 1 and 1 minus 1. I know we can do these in our head, but I just wanted to make it clear to everyone. Let's do the second piece. So for the second piece, I'm picking values of x that are greater than or equal to 1, and I'm plugging into x plus 2. Again, I'm going up by integers, but I could go up by anything. Um, now here, when x is 1, because of the equals, then this one is going to be a closed circle. Okay, that's my regular point that I'm going to be plotting. Let me... Oh, I was going to erase it. I could cross it out, erase it, it doesn't matter. X plus 2 is my line segment. So it's another line segment with positive slope. And you know what? My arrow's in the way here. I'll redraw that. There we go. Nice and neat. So 1 and 2, 2 and 2, 3 and 2. All right, we all know that. So let's actually start plotting points. Okay, so we went over graphs versus sketches in our very first lesson. Whether you are doing a graph or a sketch, label what your axes are. Um, if you're working in the corn and plane, then you're typically having the x-axis be the horizontal axis and the y-axis being the vertical axis. If you are graphing, you need to show what increment you're going up by on your axes. And I decided to go up by ones on my x-axis, but I'm gonna actually go up by twos on my y-axis. Because one of my y values is five, and I wanna fit that in here. Okay, so that's necessary for a graph. And you plot points where you see these numbers. That would be for a sketch or a graph. Um, for a sketch, you may not have to label all of the numbers, but a graph you do. Again, we went over this in the first lesson, so this should not be new. So we're going to plot a point at negative 1, negative 2. Sorry, they're not looking like points. 0, negative 1, and 1, 0. But remember, the 1, 0 is an open circle. So this is the line segment that has a positive slope. An arrow goes this way because I could have actually used more x values that are less than 1, and I didn't. So that indicates I could have. Next, I'm going to graph the second piece. I'm not going to change the color because it's still the same function. So 1, 3, this is my closed circle. Uh, 2, 4, another closed circle. 3, 5, another closed circle. Okay. And I could have kept going with more x values here because x is greater than or equal to 1. So I put an arrow. And this is f of x. Okay, for number 1. Not done yet. We're going to do this with a graphing calculator. Make sure that you're getting this into your notebooks as well. Don't just keep watching the video. Actually take notes because when you do something, you're more likely to remember how to do it. And you can do it again, especially on a test. So I'm going to erase this and get out my calculator. Okay, so for each piece of your piecewise function, you're going to put in as different y equations. So we're going to need y sub 1 and y sub 2. You can already see that I put in the first piece, but you can also see that I put in parentheses, and you're going to see why. Because of this restriction on x, we need to divide out that restriction. So I'm going to show you um, how to do that. So as you can see, I divided by, and in parentheses, x is less than 1. And I already put in the second piece as y2. I already discussed that, um, indicated that. 
and I divide it up by x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so if you're wondering where these symbols are, um, how the calculator knows whether to plot a point or not is it has to see if it divides by zero or not. And so it's under something called test on your graphing calculator. So for a second math, it is the test menu and it has all the symbols. Let me show you that. Okay, so that's where I'm getting those symbols from. Um, so you can see that for y sub one, I chose number five after I pressed X and then I pressed one and I closed my parentheses. For Y sub two, after I pressed X, I chose number four, pressed one, closed my parentheses. So now let me show you what the graph looks like on the graph and calculator. So Zoom six, my standard window, I always try to start from that, um, was actually my better window because you can see the two pieces like we had done by hand. So this kind of helps you get an idea as to um, what your graph looks like. The only problem with this, it doesn't show you where that open circle is and the closed circle that you need. So you need to understand how to graph piecewise functions by hand initially so that you can use your graph and calculator to kind of help you. And your graph and calculator gives you those tables um, the table of values except for where the open circle is. So you have to figure that one out yourself. So I'm going to actually do the second one um, the opposite way. I'm going to do it with the graphing calculator and then by hands. So you can see um, now that you know what to do, how it may or may not help you. Um, actually, it may help you. Don't get me wrong, it definitely helps to have like, you know, an extra hand showing you whether you're headed in the right direction or not. But there's some things you do still need to know how to do by hand. Okay, so I wanted to stop right here. Um, so I put in the first piece. You could continue to use the parentheses. Don't have to multiply out that quantity of x plus four squared. But in the second piece, you have a compound inequality. You have to divide out the two things that are being written there separately, not together, okay? So these pieces did not have compounds inequalities where there's more than one. This didn't either, but this does. There's one and two things that are being said. Not only is x greater than negative 2, but x is less than or equal to 2. That's what a compound inequality is. So I'm going to show you what that looks like for y sub 2, and I'll put in y sub 3 as well. Okay, so you should be able to see how I put in the first piece, and then I'm dividing again, so it's two division symbols, by another parentheses. So I'm going to uh, take another picture and show you what the rest of that looks like. Okay, so a little dark, but you do see how I divided it out. So now I'm going to put in the last piece, and then we're good to Okay, so you can see I put in the last piece and I'm ready to go to look at its graph. Okay, so this is a very pretty one. I like this one a lot. Um, it actually is a continuous function just like it looks like, but do be careful um, where your open circles are and closed circles. So I'm gonna discuss that. When you're plotting points, it's one location. It's either open circle, closed circle. You cannot have both. Repeat, you cannot have both. You cannot make anything look like a bullseye. And you know what that is, kind of like the target symbol. Okay, there's nothing like this in one point. All right, so let's actually um, talk about its graph a little bit more. Okay, so for the first piece, when you have your x values, you do have that x can equal the negative 2, okay? So let me just say, when you're plugging in, let's say, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, okay? Um, negative 6 is negative 2 squared, minus 2 is 2. I should plug it in, but I just want to write the answers. For now, you get all of that from your graph and calculator. We plug it in the negative 4, we're getting negative 2. And we plug in the negative 2, 
and we're getting two again. So this is creating your parabola look and this is your closed circle, okay, that you see here. So if you're plotting your points, okay, um, you would have, you'd have a better idea as to how to graph this. I will do that after. So let's look at your next piece. In the second piece, it's just negative x. So if I'm starting in negative two, okay, this is where we have our open circle, and I negate x, I'm getting two. So this is the exact same place, same location. When you have a closed circle and then you put an open circle right on top, it appears as closed. I try to give an example just there. It just appears as a closed circle, only if they're in the same location. And that's what happened here. So we have this line and it ends here. Okay, so this is where we have a closed circle. And let's go to our third piece. So our third piece, I don't know why I put in the extra parentheses, I don't need it, but I'm starting at two and I'm continuing from there. So if I put in two, I get negative two squared, which is four, which is a negative four, because negative on the outside. Plus two is negative two. So this is where I'd have an open circle. But once again, it's in the exact same place as it was before. So an open circle and a closed circle in the exact same place. Open, close. It only looks like a closed circle. Okay, the other values here are two and negative two. So it's the parabola that opens downward, okay? And so it is connected by a line. Let's actually do this by hand. So you get the idea of what it looks like. You can get most of these values from the tables in your graphing calculator, except for the ones where you have open circles, so that you do have to know by hand. Are you ready? Good. So x and y axis went up by twos here, that's your best bet. And don't need to for the y's. And let's plot some points. So we got negative six, two, we have negative four, negative two, and negative two, two. Okay, and there is our parabola. I could continue it that way, but not this way. Then we have our line segment. Again, it's in the same place, so it's just gonna appear as closed. I put an open circle there, can't tell the difference. To two, negative two. I would pass through the origin, by the way. That's a closed circle. So even an open circle to continue the next piece is not making a difference. This is closed, this is closed, it's a parabola that opens downward, and it's a very pretty graph. All right, practice and good luck.